Hello again. Welcome to Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. Our program is a collaboration courtesy of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Association, uh, the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Uh, also, I should mention that our program comes to you from the uh, campuses of the University of Oklahoma Health Science Center, uh, and many of the cases are courtesy of the uh, Stevenson Oklahoma Cancer Center, an NCI designated cancer center. Uh, we're going to continue our theme of uh, gynecologic pathology today, uh, looking at one of the fairly complex cases that occasionally comes through the door of our cancer center. This is a fairly young woman, 48 years old, <clears throat> who has a mass in the vaginal apex. And this has occurred seven years following removal of her uterus for a grade one endometrial carcinoma, which was also apparently a low stage. So biopsies of this lesion were a little bit confusing and challenging and uh, seen by various uh, institutions uh, of some uh, fame and notoriety uh, without a definitive answer. Uh, so resection occurred, and here we can see the soft tissues of the vaginal apex that remain, some vasculature, some inflammation, uh, and then the presence of this uh, rather uh, blue heterogeneous uh, tumor, uh, which was probably attached to the tissues here. We'll focus here on this area of uh, apparent invasion first, uh, and we can see that it's a very blue tumor. Uh, sort of interspersing itself in between uh, strands of uh, fibromuscular tissue uh, in the way that a, uh, a carcinoma might be likely to do, or uh, sometimes other neoplasms. As we look at this a little bit higher uh, magnification, we do see here, however, some glandular structures. Uh, these areas uh, obviously have an epithelial component, uh, it's a fairly high nuclear grade type of uh, tumor, uh, but clearly it's got some epithelial character to it uh, with a bit of glandular uh, evidence. So that's greatly helpful um, and uh, could represent easily then recurrence of her initial uh, vaginal, excuse me, her initial endometrial tumor, because here we've got a nice uh, gland forming tumor uh, in, infiltrating into the soft tissues here. But the story doesn't stop there. So let's look here at the rest of her tumor, this which is uh, not so attached. And here we see a slightly different story. So here, again, it's very hemorrhagic and necrotic. There's not that fibromuscular tissue in the background. Um, and as we look at this, perhaps here is a well-fixed area we don't see anything like those glands that we saw in the invasive component uh, previously. This is just wall-to-wall, side-by-side -side malignant cells uh, with a bit of cytoplasm, very high uh, uh, grade or very high mitotic rate, uh, some areas of necrosis and uh, pleomorphism. So this is essentially. Uh, undifferentiated malignant tumor, if this is all we were to see, uh, but in the presence of the uh, glandular component that we've seen elsewhere, we would assume that this is an area of dedifferentiation. Um, so this is a bit of an unusual pattern. Uh, certainly low-grade endometrial cancers do not uh, recur uh, with great frequency. Uh, and especially at seven years after the initial tumor. So uh, we'll need some additional supporting evidence to, uh, to d sort that out. Uh, also, there's the fact that uh, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, sort of spindly stroma and so forth. We'd, we'd want to rule out other things like uh, lymphoma and so forth as possibilities or other high-grade small blue cell tumors that could be associated with this uh, ki kind of scenario. So uh, let's think about this a little further. Uh, first of all, let's just talk about uh, recurrences of endometrial carcinoma. So endometrial carcinomas uh, come in several grades and uh, flavors, if you will. Uh, but this her tumor was a low-grade tumor and also was fairly low stage. 
these tumors are very infrequent to recur. Um, if we look at all endometrial cancers, the, the bad ones, the intermediate ones, and the good ones, even there, it's only about 10 or 15 percent, 13 percent overall. Um, and the site of recurrence, of course, most commonly is the vaginal apex, um, which is where our tumor is. Uh, elsewhere in the pelvis and, and more distant sites are less common, um, but do occur. And then to take matters even more un uncommonly, late recurrences beyond five years is only a very small percentage of all recurrent disease. So we've got a small percentage of a small percentage of a small percentage, uh, and we start to realize that this is uh, really an uncommon uh, scenario. Uh, the presence of parameters in the original tumor, uh, such as lymphascular invasion or a deep invasion of the myometrium, uh, or a high tumor grade cervical stromal involvement, or other sorts of uh, adnexal involvement, uh, would be uh, an additional risk of recurrence. But we didn't have that identified in her history. Um, so let's talk about dedifferentiated endometrial carcinoma. Uh, what is this? This is a relatively new term, I think first identified in the early 2000s. Uh, it's been defined as an undifferentiated carcinoma of the endometrium that arises in the setting of a concurrent or previous low-grade endometrial endometrioid adenocarcinoma. So this patient certainly could fit the qualification of having had a low-grade endometrioid carcinoma and now having an undifferentiated carcinoma. Um, there also is an, a related term that appears to be the same thing, but without this low-grade component that is just termed undifferentiated carcinoma of the endometrium. And there are a couple of significant things about this that help to differentiate it from uh, metastatic tumors or other sorts of things. One is that, of course, these are, in at least half the cases, associated with some sort of mismatch repair defect. Uh, that's defined by immunohistochemical staining, and most of these are some sort of MLH1-related promoter methylation, which means that many of them are sporadic changes. But this is particularly challenging to recognize these as being of endometrial origin. Um, when they present in a metastatic or recurrent site, because the immunohistochemical profile is a little bit atypical for endometrial carcinoma and can pose some problems. Specifically, um, let's look at this example to see what another uh, just pure undifferentiated tumor looks like. So here we see a very blue tumor with invasion of the myometrium, not very deep. Um, and then looking at this on higher magnification, uh, we see that it has, uh, you know, a little bit of sort of epithelial orientation, but there's no gland formation per se. There's areas of necrosis. Um, these tumor cells are very, very high grade, uh, very blue, high NC ratio, high mitotic rates, um, very minimal, if any sort of uh, differentiation of uh, glandular or structural sort of uh, uh, form, uh, and oftentimes associated with a fairly dense uh, inf lymphoid inflammatory infiltrate, perhaps similar or reminiscent of medullary type carcinomas of the breast or colon or other locations. Um, so these uh, undifferentiated carcinomas or dedifferentiated carcinomas uh, have, as I've mentioned, a very complex uh, immunohistochemical profile. And I apologize for this rather complex chart. Um, uh, which was uh, uh, from fairly recent literature um, and the folks down at MD Anderson. But the significant thing I want to point out is that there are several of these markers, PAX8, uh, estrogen receptor, uh, progesterone receptor, um, other markers that we often associated with endometrial origin, these are negative. 85% or more of the time, they're negative or very, very focal. That's not the usual story for endometrial adenocarcinoma. Now, they do oftentimes have some markers of endometrioid differentiation or endometrioid high-grade tumors, such as P16 and P53 mutation, uh, that can show some positivity. But that's a, not a majority of cases. 
So this is one of the challenges with this tumor is having the sense to think about it and amidst this potentially confusing immunohistochemical profile to recognize it and to not just say undifferentiated carcinoma of uncertain origin. Uh, if we've got a primary tumor in the endometrium or have a history of a primary tumor in the endometrium, we can make this diagnosis of dedifferentiated endometrial carcinoma uh, given these histologic profiles. And our tumor in this case uh, was typical of these sorts of things. It was negative for Pax8, it was negative for ERPR, but it did have some of these other markers of uh, endometrial uh, differentiation. So our final diagnosis in this uh, rather complex case today, recurrent endometrial adenocarcinoma with dedifferentiation. So uh, I hope that's given you a little introduction to this quite complex and still evolving story of uh, dedifferentiated and undifferentiated carcinomas. We hope that you'll join us again, uh, and we hope that this brings things into focus a little bit more for you. Uh, please subscribe if you like this and uh, share it with your friends, and we welcome your comments. We hope to see you again, and uh, we'll sign off for now.